What's going on guys? It's TS Inc. and I am finally back with another Adobe After Effects tutorial and I know it's been a while and I should make up for that with a really good tutorial but I'm not going to. I'm going to make up for it with a really mediocre tutorial. What this is going to be is how to get 600 frames per second out of your console clips and um, it's going to make you know your Twixter completely flawless. It's going to make the motion blur better and it's also going to slow down your render times by like it's going to make it like a thousand times slower. And I'm honestly not even exaggerating. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and jump on in, into After Effects. Brownie points, bonus points, whatever, extra points. You get a thumbs up and a high five. If you know what my current background is, I'm going to give you a high five if you know that. Um, so yeah, After Effects. Basically, the first step, uh, so I'm not going to show you this part because I can just tell you this part, uh, but all you do is when you record your clip, you have to record it from theater mode, and when you go into theater mode, you have to slow it down to times uh, 0.1 speed, and that'll give you 10% of your regular speed. Um, so the clip is playing at 10% speed um, at 60 frames per second. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag our clip in, and um, let's go ahead and just, I'm going to do this real quick. Command Shift C to pre-compose. I'm going to leave all attributes and I'm going to open this up. I stole this bit from Baker Tutorials, but you'll get over it. Um, so Command K to bring up your composition settings. We're going to change this to 1920 by 1080. That'll just double that. And then I have a preset for what I'm about to do, but I'm not going to drag that on because that won't help you at all. But basically, we're going to get rid of the black lines around the edges um, that you see right there and um, without having to scale it up. So what we're going to do is we are going to add on motion tile. And I already said that I stole this from Baker, so just get over it. Um, anyway, output, width, and height need to go to 150 for both of them and mirror the edges. All right, and then we're going to drag on... Uh, simple wire wire removal. I cannot say the words. And drag one up here, and the other point down here. And we can change this to maybe like ten. And you can see what that does. This is what they do in movies when they get rid of the wires that make things fly. And so you can see it just completely gets rid of that line. It it's it's not there. It's it's gone. <laughs> so we can go ahead and duplicate that and drag another one over here and up here and just kind of move these around until it until you get it right and so that's that so now we have this and our clip is still at uh, times one speed times 0 0.1 speed I mean thing. Something like that. Anyways, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to throw on Twixter and change this to 59.94 because that is, as you can see, what our clip is. So 59.94 and we're going to increase the speed because the clip is uh, recorded at 10 times slower than normal speed. We have to increase it 10 times so we're just going to add one more zero. I get a thousand percent speed and as you can see that's gonna make it a lot shorter clip and death happens and that'll be the end so we can just kinda do this we can go like that and let's go and trim comp to work area and now that we have see you can leave it like this and just kinda guesstimate like if you want it to go 50% speed, change it to 500. But that kind of defeats the purpose. So what we're going to do is we're going to pre-compose this and move all attributes. So now you have just a regular clip with no effects on it. So this way you can actually add the motion blur and everything on too. And if you did want to slow-mo this one, you could put the Twixter back on, change the input frame rate to 0 that is 59.94, just 10 times more. <laughs> um, and then you could adjust the speed from there. 
So you, you can see, let's go right here, 100% speed. It does make everything go a lot, lot slower. But I guess that's the, uh, I guess that's just what fucking happens. So let's take this down to 1% speed, and I'm just going to show you how much or how smooth this is going to be no matter what. So I'm going to let this pre-compose, or not pre-compose, you know what I mean, RAM preview, same shit. But it does take a very long time, especially since I'm also recording right now and only have 2 gigs of RAM, and I'm on a fucking Mac. But yeah, this is 59... 599 frames per second, so you can honestly put in 600 in the frame rate and it'll work exactly the same. But uh, this is going to give you super smooth Twixter, super smooth slow-mo. You don't really even have to use Twixter, you can just use time remapping, or you can uh, go into the time remapping and use the time warp effect, which is the same thing as Twixter. Um, you can also, uh, when you add motion blur to it, I recommend using the CC Force motion blur. Uh, it's a resample method and not a um, not an actual blur method. Uh, but if you make if you put the samples up to like ten and make them really separated, it'll look really, really, really good. But yeah, so let's take a look at this. As you can see, there's no warping like at all. But uh, let's take a look. All right, getting some lag. Oh, I know why. Let's change this frame rate. Duh, Jake. Duh! Let's try again. Super duper slow. Yeah. No warping. Everything is beautiful. Can't get smoother twister than that. But if you did want to add that force motion blur, you have to pre-compose this again. So make sure everything in this clip is edited how you want it to be edited. And uh, if there's any effects that you don't want to have motion blurred on there, make sure they are not pre-composed in this. Like if you have a HUD up and you don't want the HUD motion blurred, make sure it's on a separate layer above this before you pre-compose it. But um, Twixter has to be at the very top effect. Uh, it won't let any other effects work um, if they are above it. And the same goes with CC Force motion blur. So you obviously, uh, if they both are required to be on top of the list, can't have them on the same thing so we have to pre-compose or else it will not work so make sure you move all attributes and we're going to type in CC force motion blur throw it on there and let's come over here and click the motion blur button enable it for the composition and then enable it for the layer and let's go ahead and put let's put 12 samples and shutter angle we're going to go 350 and because it's going to be slow-mo, you're not going to notice it that much. I'm going to RAM preview a little further back. So let's just going to load this screen real quick. See how blurry it is. CC Force Motion Blur increases the render time by an actual fuck ton. My uh, Hard Crank Episode 3, every clip was recorded at times one speed, done this way, and I had the Force Motion Blur on there. It was like two minutes long, two and a half minutes long, and it took 24 hours to render. <laughs> so that just, uh, if that wants to, that'll give you some um, perspective on how fucking slow this shit renders with all this stuff on it. But it looks absolutely amazing. So if you have a better computer, you know, it won't be near shitty for you. So let's go ahead and let this RAM preview a little bit. One frame at a time. Anyways, um, oh shit, no, no! Well, let me do this, no, it won't. That's fun. Um, where is that one button? Fuck my face. Alright, well, it's just gonna take too long and it won't let me, like, leave this screen because then it'll just be like, bruh, I gotta do other things. But, um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Sorry I took so long to explain something so uh, simple and easy to do. But hey, what can I do? I'm only human. Um, if you've guessed that my background is the cover of the Contortionist album, you win. And what you won, your grand prize, is a thumbs up on your comment from me. <coughs> so uh, you should yazzo that and save it, print it out, hang it on your wall. Anyways, um, yeah, 
Uh, the Contortionist new album is fucking amazing. I kind of want to do a full review on it, uh, on just that album for a Music Monday episode, so I may do that. That might be kind of interesting. Let me know if you guys would be interested in that. Anyways, I am going to, this is 10 minutes long, so I'm going to stop recording now before it gets to the 20 minutes long, and the last 10 minutes just me rambling. So I'll see you guys later.